Jeff.com. Jeff, appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. How have things been going following the second preseason game for the Eagles? Now you get into that period where the big focus is on roster cutdowns and position battles. Yeah, and well, also the you know the starting units because they're not going to be playing in the in the last preseason game, and they haven't played at all in the, in the preseason. Well, at least most of them, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, they're really working uh, on that side and really pushing those guys because they're not going to have the opportunity to Saturday to play. And they got to get them ready for you know an opener in, in Brazil that you know isn't that far away. So that's that's part of the process as well. But um, you know, certainly as we get a little later here in the week and with the with the preseason game on Saturday, that'll be you know the guys in the third and the fourth teams really trying to you know make their case that they can make the team. Jeff, the dog's excited about it. I love that. I mean, yeah, we could have we could have a little dog barking in the back. We are we are excited about that. I love it. We're all barking too because. Uh, we have asked the question many, many times as we've seen training camp unfold whether the positivity is a little almost too much for this fan base because there's been so many great young stories coming out of this. Young players sort of stepping up. If you were to rank the best young stories coming out of camp, can you give us your top three? Um yeah, I mean, and a lot of times they're, they're the focus of the camp. But sometimes for me, uh, I, I emphasize that because it's the first time we get, first chance we get to see some of these young guys, and uh, we have to go not only just to the rookies, but you know maybe the last few classes because you haven't had guys play a lot. Nolan Smith didn't play a lot as a rookie last year, and he was a first rounder. Um, you know, Keely Ringo, we're starting to see a little more of. He was he was drafted last year, uh, and then this year, of course, Keely uh, uh, Quinion Mitchell. We're starting to see a little more of Cooper DeGene. the um, you know, Mitchell's the one who's impressed me the most. Again, if you want to ask me to give you some names, um, you know, I would start him on the outside. And, and you know, I think they have my answers in, at nickel with Avante Maddox. But they think that their best combination could be, you know, Quinion in the, in the nickel. I mean, he could start. He could be the guy in base, and then he wants to start nickel. And then you have Isaiah Rogers on the outside, uh, and that gives you your best combination. But um, but Mitchell has impressed. He's the real deal. You know, that's a tough position to play. I'm sure when he gets out there, he'll, he'll, he'll miss some plays. He'll make some mistakes, and everyone will kind of be like, oh, you know, but that that's just the cornerback spot in, the, in the NFL, today's NFL. Um, but he's the real deal. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a lot for him to have to still do. There's there's plenty of football left for him to play, but uh, he certainly can play at this level. Now, Jeff, one of our conversations today on the show, one of our big questions is, are you looking at this Eagles team as – a situation where the offense is going to need to carry the defense. We had that narrative about last year's team. Obviously, it didn't work out because of the stagnancy of the offense. But when you look at this roster, do you say the offense is going to have to drag the defense to where they need to be? Or do you see the defense as more of a complementary unit? Well, I mean, look, I mean, they're both equally important. I mean, you, you, yeah, you're going to have teams that... Um, you know, there's a, the strength is, is typically one side of the ball, and, and the Eagles have built the offense to be that, that side of the ball. Uh, not that they haven't invested in the defense, and, and this offseason we saw them um, do that. But, you know, if you look at the skill positions, the quarterback, obviously all the uh, amount of money that they've invested up front in the offensive line. I mean, yeah, I mean, they want to they score points, and in today's NFL it, it does favor uh, the offense. You, you should be leaning kind of in that direction. So they just, you know, I don't think they, they need – you know, just a, a defense to be competent, um, certainly better than it was a year ago. But yeah, they, they need, you know, if they're scoring points, they just need to kind of get, give the offense, you know, three and outs every now and then. If they turn the ball over, they need to be able to stop them, um, you know, whether it be in the red zone or somewhere else in the field. Um, and, and, you know, you're definitely giving yourself a little bit of a chance, better chance, I think, with getting Vic Fangio in here versus what they previously had. And I, I wrote about that the other day. Um, and that's what they, that's what they're thinking because, you know, Defensively, there's, I mean, there's going to be six new starters. I mean, I think uh, that's kind of drifting a little bit under the radar. I mean, there's some, some of those faces are not entirely new. They're younger and they're stepping up into those roles. But, and, you know, you six new starters and arguably your top two guys on the defensive side of the ball last year are no longer on the team. And it's on Reddick and Fletcher Cox. So, you know, it's not just a foregone conclusion that the defense will be better than last year based upon talent. Um, I think the Vic Fangio addition, though, certainly will help in that regard. Jeff, our, is there anything to watch for this Saturday? I mean, it's the third preseason game, and you see how uh, things are approached. But with these new coordinators, things could potentially be different. Any real critical, like, roster spot 
up for grabs that's going to be a blood fight on Saturday afternoon? Well, I still think there's like, um, you know, positional battles uh, that are still kind of up for grabs um, in terms of like lower on the depth chart. So, you know, right. I mean, third receiver, although I'm not really sure that I, I, I still think that the, the third receiver isn't on this roster. And then again, I know a third receiver could be a second running back or a second tight end. I, I get all that. The Eagles are going to um, spread the ball around. Um, the second quarterback position, and I think Kenny kind of like a little bit separated himself the other day. And, and, and look, that's not something the Eagles even have to tell us uh, who won that job. Um, you know, it's one of those things that break class in case of emergency. But, uh, you know, that still theoretically is, is a job that's, that still has to be figured out here. And I think that third that third preseason game could could you know help maybe Tanner McKee's cause, um, and then there's yeah, and like you said, there are there are a few there are a bunch of roster jobs up for job, up for grabs, and um, you know the the sixth uh, edge edge the you know the the fifth uh, cornerback you know is it Eli Ricks or is it Josh Job, um, you know those types of, those types of jobs um, which you know aren't necessarily super important. Fans tend to kind of, you know, because uh, there isn't much else going on, we'll, we'll kind of fixate on that, and so certainly the media as well, as we get down to picking, making our roster selections and, and who we think will make it and who we won't. Uh, but ultimately, those guys, I mean, you know, they, they could factor in at some point, and a lot of times over the course of the season with all the injuries, and um, maybe they do. Um, but for the most part, um, they don't. <laughs> We're speaking to Jeff McClain, the Inquirer, Inquirer.com on the Comcast Business Hotline. Now, Jeff, we've heard some glowing reviews about the linebacker core recently, including Nick Sirianni talking about N'Kobe Dean. Uh, like a minute and a half long answer, as most of his answers are, but uh, just gushing about how N'Kobe Dean's been playing well. But earlier in camp, we heard Vic Fangio give us a little bit more of a uh, Vic Fangio type response where he said that Dean had a rough day in the open practice and there had been some questions about some of the things he's been doing in his camp. What's your assessment of what Dean has done so far and where he's at in a really pivotal year for him? Well, I think if you, re- you know, read my practice observations, um, there's a little bit of a plug there, but you know, I've kind of been, I think, pretty fair on, on Nakobe has performed throughout this camp and and really, honestly, aside from that open practice, I, I don't think he's performed poorly at all. Um, and in fact, you know, I know everyone's catching on now, but I was you know, saying weeks ago that Nakobe's doing his job, um, and he's and he's you know he's out there playing aggressively. Which you know, again, I have to take that a little bit with a grain of salt. Like he's willing to kind of push things, to push the envelope a little bit in practice, and maybe that makes him stand out a little more. Um, these aren't real life settings, but. That being said, he has been he's been solid in both of the preseason games and and, and in the joint practice. I thought he performed well as well against the Patriots. Um, yeah, I mean, Kobe is a third round pick. I mean, they had him starting he entered last season as the starting Mike, right? So it's not like they didn't think he could do this a year ago. Now Devin White and, and Zach Bonds come on here, and, and uh, I think Jeremiah Trotter's still kind of in the mix, at least in terms of like playing time. Um, and then the question is whether. Vic is comfortable rotating there, which we've seen a lot of teams do uh, at the inside linebacker position increasingly over time. Jim Schwartz was the, really kind of the first guy to start doing it here. And Vic has said that, you know, it's, he'd prefer not to. He'd prefer to have two established guys in there. Um, but he said he's done it that the other way as well. And, and I, I wouldn't rule that out, out, out as well, that, you know, even if, like, Bond and Devin White are the starting um, inside linebackers, there's a reason to get Nakobe in there for number one. He's, re- he's always been good against the run. I don't think anyone disputed how he performed against the run last year. Uh, he's shown if, if the blitz is going to be a big part of this defense, and I, I'm not sure I'm entirely buying, buying that, but, but Nakobe can rush the passer. Um, and, and look, and he can play in, in, in space, but like I think that is where a little more of his issue is, and that's what we saw in the open practice, is that in the open space, and moving side to side is a little bit more of a struggle for him, and he's not the biggest guy, but... Um, Again, and Nakobe has played well this camp, and and this is a guy that certainly is in the conversation. Um, but you know, I don't know if it's if, if it's enough for him to, to earn the starting spot. But I still feel there's going to be some role for him on this defense. Jeff John Middleton, uh, the Phillies owner, like sort of came out and was a little bit what it could be perceived as critical of his manager in the midst of the last two months' struggles. Have you, could you ever imagine Jeffrey Lurie doing that in the course of a season? No. Uh, well, Jeffrey doesn't talk anymore during the season, right? Uh, un- un- unless it's you know under 
rare uh, occasions. Typically, we only really get them once at the you know at the, tri- at the owners' meetings. Um, you know, maybe if the Eagles make a playoff run or push to get to the Super Bowl, um, you'll see Jeffrey, uh, uh, and maybe sometimes he'll kind of say something to a few reporters here and there. But no, that's just not Jeffrey's role. I um, mean, you know, that's just not who Jeffrey is, right? Um, and you know, love it or or leave it. Um, you know, that's just I, I kind of I understand that, like especially over the course of the season. Um, you know, you, you've hired your coach to do a certain job, and um, you're going to let him do it. Now, now he can make a move at some point. The Eagles start slow. That would speak volumes about how he feels about Nick Sirianni, right? Um, but um, no, that's typically not how Jeffrey handles his thing, uh, handles his business. All right, Jeff. Well, you handle your business very well every Thanks, time Jeff. we speak to you. Appreciate it.